So I just thought I'd make a video, update of uh, what's going on. Not a lot uh, during this uh, coronavirus outbreak, but uh, a few points of note. Um, so uh, we work on the basis uh, with the ironing. We work on a basis of um, seven day uh, forecast and we each week do Monday to Monday, um, so every Monday we put our money in the bank. Um, that's not given. We we do offer we do offer a, um, a payment via PayPal or bank transfer, um, but we also obviously accept cash. Uh, so we've got a separate account that we accept PayPal and bank transfers to, and obviously we accept cash, and then we move everything into a into another account then on a on a Monday. Uh, so that everything can be shown through for for our tax purposes, um, and uh, so we keep a, a note of uh, what we earn every week, and we set ourselves targets, and we know where our limits are, and we have a um, we have a we have a different accounts for different things as well. So we have a, a account where. Uh, we have a an overflow as it were so we have um a target which we which we aim to hit every week and if we go over that target we put that money into the overflow account and then if we're under the um target the, another week we will then take money from the overflow and put it in so that we are consistently on the same amount of money every week so that helps us with uh, with bills and stuff and, and gives us a, a regular income. Now, um we were we're never uh we're never significantly short short. Um but the coronavirus is having an effect as having an effect on us uh with regards to uh people not wanting their clothes with other people's clothes not wanting their clothes in other people's houses obviously we offer um we offer a, a system where we do clean your clothes but we don't do it here uh we work in cooperation with uh a company in Chester who do uh the washing for us and we do their ironing and we do our ironing and they do our washing so um most people's stuff that we do now is for the double for washing and for ironing so that is being moved around at least two and sometimes three locations uh plus um it is um it is being put with other people's stuff as well uh, and also th those fears of people um, that you don't know where, don't, don't know who else it's coming from and where it's going. I completely um, understand, and that's that's fair enough. And um, people's fears are uh, are fair enough. I mean, if that's how they if that's how they see things, that's fair enough. And uh, hopefully they will return with their business after um, after this 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 virus passed. But at the present, that is the situation. So we are losing money on people cancelling on a short-term basis. Um, now, the issue with that is that we are now low, much lower than we are on a regular basis. So we are now this week, uh, for example, we're £400 off our normal target um, and we expect that to be somewhere in the region of a similar um, manner this week if not worse now uh, it, it's troubling uh, yes but uh, at the same time what we assume is that today there'll be some announcements from the government and less things will be happening so we won't be doing as much as a family anyway so i won't be going to football i won't be able to go to school i won't be able to go to play centers swimming baths what have you because uh things are going to get starting to get shut down in the next week or so so uh we won't be doing as much so you won't be spending as much uh so what we've got to do is we've got to make sure that we've got the money there 
for the bills and the like. So that's that's very important that that stays um, that stays uh, at a constant, so shall we say? Uh, so we've still got to we've still got to bring the money in for that. So we have got to prepare ourselves for a for a, a tucking in of the braces, as it were. Um, it's um, it's quite the uh, uncomfortable time for us, but uh, we think that um, because everything will be limited, we should be fine. But um, it is a little bit worrying. Uh, but there's nothing much you can do about it. You've got to plough on. Um, we did. I mean, I normally work all night on a Sunday night. I was finished by two a.m. last night again. Uh, that's two nights in a row that I haven't finished. I haven't done a full night shift, which is uh, which is quite nice in a way. But uh, in another way, obviously, it's uh, it's quite uh, quite difficult. Uh, so it, it is it is affecting us, and uh, um, it just shows how how things like this are getting into everyday lives of of everybody, and how it is affecting even things you wouldn't think it would affect like 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 an ironing business uh, like ours uh, we you know the impact of this is is far and wide and it will be um very interesting to see um where we go from here but as i say we hope with the downturn and everything uh it, it'll even itself out so we're earning less but we're spending less um which will which will which will make things um Okay. The only the, the only thing is that, that, that you go to a point where you're 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 lower than what your bills are. Uh, that will be the problem. Um, we're okay at the minute for that, um, but you know it would be interesting to see if the government will will do anything about that. Um, uh, it depends how long this lasts and, and how low we go. I can't see us going massively low because it it's still essentially things that people need to do but people will have more time on their hands and they will be able to do these things on their own so you could see quite a significant downturn but again like you say you hope that's not the case um but it's uh, uncertain times and uh we just have to plough on, I suppose. Uh, we um, we are just uh, in the in the present time, uh, just awaiting some stuff to come in. So I'm just uh, sitting here. Jess has gone out to do some delivering. I'm sitting here waiting for people who come round and uh, bring their stuff. Obviously, we charge extra for pickup and delivering. So some people would prefer to bring their own stuff, which is fine. It's great for us. Uh, it makes uh, it makes our time a little bit easier. But uh, it doesn't mean one of us has to sit in. So um, I'm just sitting here now, um, just uh, halves at school, and I'm just sitting here waiting for a few people to deliver for a couple of hours, and uh, hopefully they'll all turn up and we'll get a good bit of orders today. And um, so far, so good today. It's been it's been quite busy this morning. We have had a few people um, who cancelled last week who have uh, come back on board with us this week, um, mainly because they're finding that um, despite their initial worries, they haven't got the time to do it. Um, so they're, they're almost being forced into it. Uh, they're just going to have to get over their fears and they're going to have to allow uh, their washing to come out anyway because... The fear is the, the the problem is that they just they simply haven't got the time to do what they need to do. But like I said, that might change if everything is pulled back in. People might find themselves with a lot more time on their hands, and they're going to do it themselves anyway. But we have had people come back on board today. Whether that's a trend that it, it, it will continue through the week, I don't know. I don't think it will. Um, I think you still will get a high volume of cancellations. I'm expecting to be below our target again this week um so it's gonna be interesting times um and we'll keep on going as as far as we can as far as uh football is concerned and other sports pretty much everything is uh on uh on the downturn now we're expecting uh the rugby league to go today uh rugby union looks like it's going to go in england it's already gone in in the in the 
in the other leagues around the world. Um, the World Rallying finished early. Uh, the snooker was played last night in Gibraltar, but they're not expecting to play any more tournaments uh, because of a lot of the uh, borders closing around as well. That was uh, what the uh, rallying um, cited as well. Uh, as far as football goes, non-league football is still on the cards, but um, I would expect today that most will go. Uh, but interestingly enough, it will be interesting to see if the government do do this um, 500 gathering thing, whether lower leagues, say, for example, Northwest County's team, who average, say, 50 people, are they going to carry on playing uh, through all of this anyway, as long as their players are fit and well? Because that level of football will be the only level of football and they will still get bigger crowds. They're not going to hit any any massive heights, probably. Um, but they might get, uh, let's say... that. You know, they might up their crowds to three three hundred. It would still be well under the five hundred maximum. So, um, you know, if if you're another kind of team, do you, do you carry on? Uh, so there might be some some uh, some football still played, which would be nice. Uh, whether I go to it or not uh, is another thing. I'm still a bit um, concerned about a few things. Like I say. Um, we would have to retract what we do as a family um, because we're not earning as much. And obviously, as much as I love going to football, um, you can't. Can you justify doing it if we're not earning as much and we haven't got the money to 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 put aside for the things that we we need to put aside things aside for? Um, so, for example, it. If the Euros is suspended for a year, the Euros are still going ahead, aren't they? So you've still got to put money aside for that. Um, we, we have a, we've got, only got a couple of months now left on the MOT of the car. Um, and we know there's a few little bits and bobs that need doing to that. So we know that we need to, to put money aside for that as well. Um, so that's, that's gotta be, that's gotta come before, going to just doing ground hopping. Obviously, if it was Wrexham and stuff, uh, it would take a little bit more priority, which I know is uh, something that, that um, we do. But it's it's going to have to be um, taking, uh, taking the priorities up with, um, with, with where we are. Um, it looks like Wrexham's legal go... Um, but I say the the very lowest leagues they might play on if they say, for example, the the the, the Euros is going to be cancelled, finished kaput, and they're gonna they're not gonna carry on with the season as well. That's going to finish in kaput, and we'll just start afresh um, next season when everything's when everything's calmed down. I might I might then say well. OK, I haven't got the order to say it for. I haven't got the end of the season to worry about. I might start going to a few of the... Um, a few of the... A few of the... Uh, a few of the very smaller games that might carry on. Um, but like I say, you, with stuff like the car, we've got to prioritise that because obviously we don't have a car. We can't do deliveries. Uh, we can't do deliveries. We won't get paid and we won't get enough money anyway. So things like that still have got to be prioritised and saved for as well. And that's got to come before ground hopping and stuff like that. I know um, it's difficult, but um, we've got to do stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I know it's not difficult to some people, but to, to somebody like myself who uh, just lives and breathes football and stuff like that, it isn't easy for me. Um and I'm just a very outgoing person. Uh, halves the same. She can't stand being in the house. I mean, she literally never plays with the toy that we buy her. She just wants to go out and play at the park, play at the play centre, go out to the swimming baths, do anything. She just she she can't stand being in the house. She goes absolutely stir crazy. 
So um, that's that's a difficulty that we obviously want to take her out places as well, and uh, we can't do that. And I think uh, poor old Jess probably gets driven up the wall by me and Harv getting driven up the wall by by literally being stuck in the house all the time because we can't afford the money to go out and do things if uh, if the case is that that um, we've got to be a little bit more. Scrimping with the pennies with there's not earning as much much money. So uh yeah, it could be tough times ahead and uh but we'll we'll get through it. We we've, we've got a we've got a good uh, family bond there between the three of us. And um we'll we'll be fine. We've we've had some tough times over the last few years. Um you know, me and Jess have both lost jobs before and um we've had We've had quite tough times, and we've we've come through those. So I don't have any. any I don't think we we have any worries that uh, it's gonna it's gonna break the family bond that we have. So that's that's a positive. We know uh, we might get very annoyed with each other, but uh, we will get through it, and we can cope with it. We've we've coped with much worse. I mean, the situations that we were in. Uh, say four, five years, five years ago, when uh, I got made redundant in Manchester, and uh, then we uh, have came along, and um, Jess got made redundant as well, and um, things didn't work out there where we thought they would. Um, uh, it made life very, very difficult because I had, I mean, I lost, I lost my job and um, I started up the ironing business and uh, I was doing it on a very small basis, just me on my own and I didn't have, Jess didn't do any of my delivering because she was, um, she was still working uh, in, in Wigan at the time, so uh, I was just doing it on a basis where people were delivering stuff to me and uh, so I, I we, we, we had Harve and I basically became the main carer for Harve and doing a little bit of work on the side uh, whilst Jess did the main work um, in Wigan because it was a good job and it wasn't worth me trying to get another job with my eyesight um, jobs are hard to come by anyway. I mean, it's really, really hard to get a job when you're disabled. Really, really hard, especially when you've got such a, a unique disability that I have and unique problems. Not unique disability per se. A lot of people are blind, but unique, uh, dis- uh, a new, unique problem. Uh, not a lot of people have got anorexia, and it's hard to make people understand uh, where my where, where my skills are with that problem so that became um so we decided that it would be best that if we were going to have a child now would be a good time because Jess had a really good job and I could dedicate a little bit of time for it and also I was running quite well with the ironing as well it was doing it was doing okay um and we were, we were getting a little bit of money in from that and I could do that around around looking after half and then obviously came the bombshell that um, Jess was losing her job, and that made things terrible. I mean, when when Harv was born, oh, we were um, there's no there's no words to describe it apart from piss poor. Uh, we struggled a lot, and uh, it took a lot of a lot of uh, hard work on both my part and uh, Jess's part to uh, create the the business we have today, and we are extremely proud of what we've done uh and we were very very hard and we had some very very difficult times but uh it did show um what a great bond we have as a family and um i've no doubt that this current situation the current turn down is only temporary we know that and we know that we'll get through it um it might be difficult, but it's not going to be impossible, and we 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 are we are positive that we'll come out the other end okay. Uh, so that's a good thing. I don't think there's there's any worries about that um, per se. It will be interesting if they do do the school closures. 
that could make things a little bit harder. I mean, they're talking about 16 weeks uh, the schools could be shut for. Um, obviously, the work we do is quite dangerous work when you've got a little kid around. I mean, you've got hot iron and stuff like that. And um, Harv's not an idiot, but um, all kids are kids. So it's you're trying to keep her out of that room when we are working in that room. Um, she doesn't understand why we try and do that. Um, but we're just trying to keep her safe as well as not mess up all the stuff that's in there as well. So um, it is hard on a, in that way. Um, and if we have to have her at home for 16 weeks, then that's going to be making it tough. Because the other thing is, you don't want to send it off to grandparents and stuff because those are the vulnerable people during this coronavirus. Those are the people with the underlying health conditions that are of the age where people are suffering from this virus. And so you don't want to be selfish and push your, your children off onto those people. So if Harvey is off for 16 weeks, it really will be a case of... One only one of us working, and the other one being totally dedicated to Harvey and having to take turns in in that role as well. So that will make life hard. But as we say, we don't think we'll be getting as many orders in. So that will be helpful to our cause of having to have Harvey with us all the time. Um, so although there's a lot of worries, the fact that everything's going to happen at once. So everything will close, there won't be as much to do, there won't be as much work, there won't be as much money, we'll all come together and it'll all work out for itself, I think, in the end. But it's just this little bit of time before it all sort of happens that's a little bit of tenseness and you're a little bit worried, what if one goes before the other, what if this happens before that happens, and it's just that little, it's the little start that's, that's the, the, the unsettling knot in your stomach, I think, really. But we know eventually it'll all be OK. It's just this little bit of a start here where some things are sort of going before other things. And you think, oh, 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 uh, and it would be better if everything was just, you know, done at once. But that's not the way the world works unfortunately so we just have to wait and see and just uh, hold our breath and do our best in the circumstances until everything's sort of leveled off and then once everything levels off everything will start rising again probably at an even pace uh, I would imagine uh, everything will begin to open again more money will come in again and everything will become easier so you know it's just this, this start period, really, which is a little bit uh, worrying and how we um, restrict ourselves until we know exactly what we've got. That's the thing with being self-employed is you, you don't know what's coming in and you're thinking, oh, all right, so where's it going to go, all this? So it's, it's, it is quite, um, it's just quite a worrying time, really, at this, at this present time. But as I say, um, hopefully it'll... Uh, It'll it'll flatten itself out sooner or later. Uh, I would imagine within the next uh, probably fortnight we'll know uh, where we are and uh, how long it's going to last. And uh, I think that'll be the, that. This is the worst of it. The worst of it won't be the lowest and the, the lowest time of money. The worst of it is now of the unsurety of where it will go. Um, that is that is so in in a sense you are in the worst of the time at the moment. Uh, once you know what you're getting, you can cut your cloth accordingly. Um, but at this present time, you don't quite know where you're going with everything, um, which is the is the frustrating bit. So that's how things stand at the minute, uh, and we'll we'll plod on um, today for. Example, we'll just do this, wait for these orders to come in, and then I'm going to go and take half uh, swimming again tonight. She um, she loves that, as I've told you before. Uh, we went to Chester yesterday because Wrexham was shut. Uh, that's gone really poor, the Northgate, Northgate Arena. I must admit, I've not been there for many years, but uh, I thought the facilities and all that was, were really poor, and they haven't changed since I was a kid, to be honest. Um, so we'll go back to Wrexham today. I know it felt very expensive at Chester. I mean, double, double what it cost me to take half in Wrexham. 
Um, so that was that was quite uh, shocking, really. And you only get a limited amount of time in the pool as well, which is ridiculous, really. Um, so we'll go back to Wrexham today. And uh, we went been to the shop this morning and bought a few little uh, swimming bath toys as well and took her to Mackey's this morning. So she had a nice little morning before she went to school. Um, so... She had a nice. Uh, she she um she got out of the house this morning, so that's good. And um, she's been off to school now, and uh, we'll come back and do the swimming after. And then I'll work tonight once she falls asleep, and um, see how, how long I have to I have to I have to work for. But I don't expect to work all night again. And uh, then uh, start the whole process again tomorrow. Hopefully, with a little bit more information from the government and uh, also a little bit more information on uh, on the on the football front as well uh, that would be nice so uh, it's all a bit of wait and see at the moment <laughs>